Good morning. Welcome to the NY and JPA weather forecast discussion for March 14th, 2013. It's currently 7.30 a.m. and it's a bit chilly out there. Okay, it's cold out there. Especially with the winds anywhere from the west to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And you have temperatures in the mid to upper 20s, even a few upper teens here and there over the northern interior. And upper 20s to lower 30s along the coast. It feels like it's in the 20s. It feels like it's January, but it's not. It's March, and we will be warming up, though. So we have some good news here in that, at, least, at the very least, we'll get into the mid-40s along the coast, upper 30s to lower 40s over the interior for this afternoon. And we'll also be dealing with variable cloud cover and perhaps an isolated flurry or shower here or there. Taking a look at the radar, you can see... We have a few of these rain and snow showers moving through the northern Atlantic this morning. Most of this is not reaching the ground, and the snow showers that do reach the ground really aren't doing all that much but producing a flurry here or there. Perhaps surprising you on your way to work, but that's about it. The majority of these snow showers are focused off of the Great Lakes, especially off Lake Ontario and portions of Lake Erie here. This is basically lake effect snow and producing some nice snow over Oswego, my old college town here, right about here. And uh, that snow is not going to really reach the northern Atlantic all that much. Again, a flurry here or there, but nothing significant in nature. So what's causing these flurries? Well, we have a cold front moving through. This cold front will reinforce the polar air mass that is in place for today, keeping our temperatures nice and chilly. For this time of year and certainly below normal however high pressure is going to be taking hold and by this evening through tomorrow dry conditions can be expected with slightly warmer temperatures more in the mid to upper 40s possibly even a few lower 50s over southern new jersey as we start to moderate this air mass just a bit now we do have some changes in the weather pattern as specifically with the potential for some rain and snow for this weekend. It looks like it's not going to be all that impressive, to be frank. Uh, first of all, taking a look at the water vapor satellite picture, you can see some key changes going on in the atmosphere. One, obviously, we still have our high latitude blocking setting up over the Atlantic. But notice over the Pacific. Very interesting. This huge trough here is really starting to intensify. It's really starting to drive a lot of moisture into the West Coast. In other words, it's starting to create a trough in the West. Now, right now, it's in the Pacific Northwest. But over the next couple of days, we'll see a nice trough set up over the Western United States, especially over the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. That's going to lead to the development of a ridge over the Central and Eastern United States, but we're still going to have to deal with the high latitude blocking setting up over the Atlantic. So we're basically going to be setting up a divide in this Arctic cold air mass that has been sitting up over Canada. Much of that cold air is going to be starting to focus over northwestern Canada. And we're going to basically separate that cold air from the cold air over northeastern Canada. And that cold air over northeastern Canada is going to slowly moderate as the core of the cold air starts to shift more towards Asia and the extreme portions of the north of northwestern North America, basically Alaska and northwestern Canada. So when we take a look at the model guidance, the change in the weather pattern, the way that the models are starting to, to pick up on these changes, basically leads us to a different solution than, than what some of the models, specifically the European model, was showing for the potential for late this upcoming weekend, specifically Sunday night, on through Monday. Now, the previous model guys were suggesting, hey, there could be some snow here on Sunday night and a Monday, potentially some substantial snow away from the coast. Now, not so much. And the reason why is that the high latitude blocking setup is not as impressive. Now, yesterday in a public post, I discussed how the way that the pattern was setting up with three upper level lows over North America at the same time was likely not, not going to happen. And what will happen is that the models will start to focus on one area of lower heights and weaken the other areas. Or you're going to see a separation between two primary upper level lows or polar vortexes 
over the northern hemisphere and we're starting to see that take place in the European model guidance now. So here we are for this evening. You can see we have a nice broad trough here. Here's our polar vortex. Here's an upper level low right around the Aleutian Islands and uh, western Alaska. And of course we have our trough over the Canadian Maritimes and a nice ridge over portions of Greenland. We are chilly but we are generally dry with temperatures struggling in the 40s. Now by tomorrow we start to see a little bit more of a shift towards warmer conditions with our high pressure system locked in over portions of the Gulf Coast and we get a bit more of a westerly wind and that moderates our temperature just enough to get us back to basically slightly below normal. We're not near normal yet. By this upcoming weekend, now here's the fundamental change in the weather pattern. Here we are on Saturday. We have a weak disturbance that moves through producing a few scattered rain and snow showers. So for the St. Patty's Day Parade, there could be a few snowflakes in the air. No real accumulation though. Just again, a few rain and snow showers, nothing significant. So this isn't a washout for the parade if you're going. Still go, bring an umbrella with you just in case. If you don't mind a few showers of snowflakes, and quite frankly, if I remember the uh, St. Patty's Day Parade, uh, most of you won't care anyway. So there you have it with a few rain and snow showers. Now notice what's happening with our polar vortex here. It's locking itself up over portions of central Canada. And look where all the Arctic air is set up. Now this is on Saturday evening. All that Arctic air, very cold Arctic air, is basically focused where? Well, right around the Hudson Bay. So we're still chilly, we're still cold, close enough to that Arctic air to create some problems for us, okay? We're still chilly, we're, we want to get rid of this cold air, right? Okay, so by Sunday, notice what's happening here. We're seeing more of a focus towards Western Canada and the trough over Eastern Canada is starting to separate and we're starting to see a little bit more of a building ridge here over the Great Lakes. We're starting to see more of a trough here over the Western United States. Now, Weather patterns do not just switch, they evolve, they uh, transition. So notice the, what happens with the 500 millibar pattern. We see more of a convergence, that's winds coming together aloft. That means high pressure is stronger over the Great Lakes. That means our warm front is suppressed well to the south. And that means Sunday is dry, chilly, but dry. So I'm looking at temperatures basically in the lower to mid 40s. Nice thermal gradient setting up over the mid-Atlantic, but because of the suppression, there really isn't any moisture to deal with. And really there isn't much of a push of warm air towards the northern mid-Atlantic. Notice everything's more from west to east here over the northern mid-Atlantic. So all your moisture is focused to the south, and so therefore you end up with dry conditions on Sunday night into Monday morning. By the time we do get to Monday, notice what's happening with the weather pattern though. We no longer have this broad trough that was shown on the model guidance yesterday. Instead, now we see what's quite frankly more reasonable, more physically possible, in which you get this ridge developing over the St. Lawrence River Valley. You have our upper level low and negative NAO signature setting up around the uh, Canadian Maritimes, but you also see our polar vortex clearly focus more towards Western Canada. And this is the key observation here. Look what's happening with all of our Arctic air. It's being refocused towards Western Canada and the cold air over Eastern Canada is starting to weaken. It's starting to moderate. And there's a lot more warm pockets setting up over portions of Greenland and over portions of Eastern North America. Now with all this warm air setting up, Monday night into Tuesday morning, we could see some rain and snow, especially along the coast. I'm a little concerned about the interior, especially for the potential for freezing rain. This high pressure system locked in over portions of Maine could keep cold air in place long enough over portions of northeastern Pennsylvania, northwestern New Jersey, specifically Sussex County, uh, the Hudson River Valley, and even portions of northwestern Connecticut, uh, where that cold air is locked in. And as a result, you end up with snow, sleet, and eventually freezing rain before this all changes over to rain. So as this low pressure system lifts up towards the uh, St. Lawrence River Valley and then redevelops off the coast because of our block here, we'll have to deal with some wintry mix changing over to rain over the interior. Basically, this is a rain event along the coast with a nice easterly wind in place. By the time we get into Monday evening, 
I mean, should I say, uh, Tuesday evening, our low pressure system is intensifying and redeveloping off of the New England coast. We have heavy rain and heavy snow setting up around southern New England, but the northern Atlantic is pretty much drying out. And look what's happening here once again. We have a nice negatively tilted trough, but we see a separation between our polar vortex and our storm here. Why? Well, look what's happening with the cold air. It's all being focused over Western Canada, and the cold air over the northern Atlantic is still chilly, but nowhere near as cold as what some of the other model guys were suggesting because we're seeing a more of a separation. This block, the support for the block over the northern Atlantic is starting to weaken, and we're starting to see more of a support of a trough in the west, ridge in the east. So let's fast forward a little bit. You see our storm rapidly intensifying over the northern Atlantic. A nice upper level lows in place. So next week's going to be still chilly, but I don't think it's going to be as cold as some of the earlier model, model guidance was showing here. So we'll still be hovering in the upper 30s to mid 40s for highs on Wednesday. But notice, look what's happening with our block here setting up here. We're starting to see a connection between this ridge is starting to develop and this ridge over portions of northeastern Canada. Meanwhile, our polar vortex is redeveloping towards western Canada. If you want snow and cold in March, you do not want to see this. Okay, because this means all of our Arctic air is being locked up where? In the Yukon, where quite frankly they could keep it. So by the time we head towards the end of the forecast period, 10 days out, look where we are with our weather pattern. We have a nice strong storm still, still sitting out here in the northern Atlantic, keeping our negative NAO block in place. But we also see our polar vortex redeveloping and basically focusing itself over northwestern Canada. That means all the Arctic air is locked up where? Northwestern Canada and the Arctic Circle. The cold air over northeastern Canada is nowhere near as cold as it was. And notice the winds at 850 millibars. They're still from the northwest, but we're also starting to get influence from the maritime Atlantic air mass and also a moderating polar air mass over eastern Canada. And as a result, the cold air that's over the northern Atlantic would support temperatures more in the upper 40s to mid 50s. And the very warm air that's building over the Mississippi River Valley and Ohio River Valley is not that far away. With just one little shift, you end up with more spring-like weather conditions. This type of setup, though, I'd watch out for a few backdoor cold fronts over New England and portions of Connecticut and Long Island. That is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. You can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter and Facebook. Of course, if you're looking for more weather information, more technical discussions, you can always become a premium member for only $10 a month. And of course, merchandise is on the way if you want to get your own NYNJPA weather t-shirt or hat or mug or whatever. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there.